Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast and happy Thursday. That feels like a Friday because we're fucking celebrating, bitch. We're motherfucking celebrating ass white bitch ass Excuse me. Asshole. Excuse me. This is a nice family friendly podcast and people listen in the car with their kids and I'm not going to tolerate that type of language so early on in the show when the kids are still awake. I'm not going to do it. Oh my God. Okay, mom. Yeah. Teacher, class is in session. Ooh, ooh, order in the court. Order in the court. If you're watching on YouTube, it's a feast for the eyes today because Trudy and I are wearing new merch that drops tomorrow morning. And not only are we wearing this gorgeous new merch, but we're kind of twinning with our updos and just like slaying the house down boots. The cozy vibes. The cozy boots. vibes. And this is our new collection that drops tomorrow. So tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time at shoptoastmerch.com, you can get this grout fit sporty set that we're sporting and we it's also perfect for the Super Bowl. we also have a navy crew neck sweatpants set that just says the toast on the breast for the more subdued girlies yeah so the two sets are kind of like inverted versions of one another though not identical but the other set is just navy and it's it's a little more pared down while this is very toasty can I ask you a question mm -hmm. Do you think two people on the planet love anything more than we love the time 10 a.m.? Like, one thing about us, like, if we're going to do something, it's at 10 a.m. No, 10 a.m. is the right time. It's the it's a good time. Even with the kids, like, 10 a.m. is the right, like, we left for Disney. Let's get out the door at 10 a.m. Like, it's a very realistic time. It's not too early. It's not too late. All you need is a light jacket. Right, it's like the first double digit hour of the day. So it's like early, but like a little late. Yeah, it's not like early bird gets the worm. Right, right. But Which it's actually, not noon. I've been doing early bird gets the worm. I've been waking up every day at like 6.30, 7, which is earlier than I wake up. I think it's because I was on like a prednisone pack and you know, they make you a little like It's a steroid. You're nuts. roided up. Yeah, I actually oh, took so my- Oh, so that's why you've been a little nutty, professor. Okay. You said it was Tylenol you were taking. Well, I started. But the swirly this, was on roids. But Jackie, the day that I everyone thought I was on the drugs and like high, I actually hadn't started the roids yet. Oh wow! I feel like on this show, like when you are on any sort of medication, substance, you have to let everyone know because they're so attuned to our personalities that when there's yeah. even the slightest change, like you, you have to be transparent about what you're taking. Unlike Tristan Thompson. Yes, which we will talk about today. I wasn't planning on it, but... Oh, you know what? I'm so glad because I don't give a shit. But now that we're, we've brought it up, let's just deliver the news. I don't know. I'm sure everyone already saw. He's been suspended because they drug test you in the NBA for like roids, real roids. Yeah. And he tested negative. Oh, no, excuse me. He it was a negative... It was Aladdin. It was Aladdin. He tested positive, which was very negative for him. <laughs> Is that from something? I just made it up. That's hysterical. Oh, it's My hysterical God. stuff. Uh, might even be like better than is Aladdin. Aladdin. Okay, what is better than someone asking like, what's that from? To something you just original. That's like someone saying, did you get your glam done? And you did it yourself. So true. Also, even though COVID was like a really dark time in like our history, one of the bright spots was taking a COVID test and telling people your COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and telling people your COVID Aladdin. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like we'd be like, I think I have it. I think I have it. And then we'd send the thing and the people would be like, would you, what do you, what did you have it? It's Aladdin. And they didn't know if you were positive or negative. If you guys don't know that reference from the dictator starring Sasha Baron Cohen, like I do feel sorry for you. I want to say, I feel like people actually don't know that reference. That's like not one of his most no. quoted or popular movies. Obviously everybody knows Borat, but the dictator, Aladdin motherfucker is so grossly and criminally underrated criminally like you need toast movie of the week you guys have to watch the dictator at some point this week it's it's probably not better than borat because borat was a cultural shift but it's his Jackie, number two Jackie. movie wait i feel like we're confusing movies what is the seth rogan movie that like oh so many... that supreme leader um i think that the one's interview. called no, that's the interview. the interview. Okay, They're both like loosely based Wait, off Kim Jong. We need to talk about something that I feel like gets swept under the rug and we what? need answers. Remember when that movie was coming out, the interview, and it was like making fun of Kim Jong-un. And yeah. so all of these emails started to leak from Sony. And there was a hack. They said it was like North Korea retaliating against the coming out of this Seth Rogen movie. Yeah. 
was that true? Was it not? It was I my understanding it, that like that was the truth. That was, that's like the, the line we've been served, but like that seems insane. Do you feel like there's a conspiracy beneath the surface about that leak? I kind of do. Like, it really doesn't make sense that Kim... It is jo- a little radical. It is Kim a little Jong radical. Kim Jong-un leaked the emails because he didn't want this unflattering movie to come out about him. I know. I and feel, it's not uh, even a movie about him. Like, it's a parody fiction. movie. Yeah, and there's, like, actual, like, documentaries about Kim Jong-un that are, like, based on real stuff that happened that, like, are probably worse. Right, right. And this, like, was kind of, like, funny. And I think he came off, he listens to Firework by Katy Perry. Like, you got to see a different side of Kim. Actually, I just saw a video of Kim. Um, there was like a big affair in North Korea. They um, threw a volleyball game in his honor. I guess he like loves volleyball. Do you know what I'm talking about? Did you see this? No, but it's reminding me of one of my favorite memes that I'm going to go find. But continue. Okay, so he showed up. They, they threw this like recreational volleyball game for him where like all these volleyball players came and like there was cheerleaders and Kim Jong sat and just like had the best time watching these men play volleyball. That's classic Kim. Classic Kim. There is a meme that I send to Ben every time I see it. <laughs> and I am going to take the time to find it, if you don't mind. Yeah. No, I don't mind. And I do feel like now would be a good time to mention, like, Kim Jong-un ill and the dictators of North Korea, like, is one of my favorite topics to talk about. It's, it is low-key one of the craziest things about, like, the world we currently live in. Like, that there's, like, this kind of, like, toxic remote dictatorship and like we don't even know what goes on there they don't have cell phones they're completely cut off it really is the craziest thing and there's that girl you know the girl i'm talking about uh crystal park she's she's, she escaped yeah she like escaped north korea and like that's her thing now she's like a media personality i saw some i always see clips of her on joe rogan like talking about it it sounds like not fun she has a book and Mm. rebecca's read and she's always recommending it to Mm. us to read on the redheads maybe we should turdy like and know what we're talking about i feel as though my roman empire is the fact that north korea exists like it's so crazy and it's just so opposite from our way of life you know freedom i won't let you die freedom i will not give you up you know those liberties we take for granted it's so true ah makes you think you're having a hard time finding this meme According to his biography, Kim Jong-il first picked up a golf club in 1994 at North Korea's only golf course and shot a 38 under par round that included no fewer than 11 holes in one. That's really funny. Satisfied and with his performance, he reportedly immediately declared his retirement from the sport. That is so funny. And that's literally Ben if he was a dictator. Like literally. Mine would be starting like, propaganda that he hit 11 holes in one in one game. Yeah, but like the fact that all of the subjects like have to think Kim Jong is like the most amazing thing ever, even though he's like literally never done or accomplished anything and he's like kind of ugly, very ugly. Um, If people just like adored me, like it would be mandatory every Friday night. Like there's a turning concert at MSG and you better like light your fucking phones up and get lit. Yeah. It's also crazy how the transition from ill to un, Kim Jong's like so smooth. Jackie, I'm so glad you brought that up because I actually remember, I'm literally going to start crying. It's so funny. I like remember being like 12 when Kim Jong-il died and like I knew his name in my bones, Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-il. And I said, there's no way I'm going to be able to start saying Kim Jong-un. It's just, it's beyond my capability. Like it's a, it's a rebranding that's going to take a while to get used to. So seamless. The way I don't even even think about Kim Jong-il anymore. It's crazy because for a while, the name on everybody's lips was Kim Jong-il. And now it's Un. Exclusively Un. Exclusively Un. You forgot about the ill. And I do think that like branding agencies should look to what they've done. So how you could change the names culturally so easily. I completely agree. And it just, like, it does make me sad. Like, obviously, on a really serious note, like, living in North Korea sounds like really one of the most miserable existences of all time. Mm -hmm. And even made, like, making it even more sad is they can't listen to the toast. No, that's devastation. That would be, like, in my my dictatorship, that would be mandatory. Of course, we'd be playing over all the loudspeakers. Yeah, we we would literally be, like, um, Stanley Tucci in the Hunger Games. Caesar. Milan. Yeah, yeah. Not Not Milan. Milan. (laughs) <laughs> Not Milan. Caesar Milan is a celebrity dog trainer who we had on the breath once. But back to what I was saying about the interview and the Sony hacking. Oh, like, were oh. they really? Like, that's insane if true. And if not true, they used the hacking as like a 
marketing gimmick for a they movie did. about a dictator. I guess kind of smart, but these like crazy emails came out. Remember like Kevin Hart wouldn't promote his own movie? I That is my Roman Empire for <laughs> real. Like honestly, because when I saw it, I was like, damn. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, no, this is a special breed of businessman. And I completely agree. Yeah. Like I don't own this movie. You do. Yes, I'm being paid to do it. And it would behoove me to promote it. But this is a part of the job. No, I remember reading those emails and like, my whole perspective on life changed like it was that was just a crazy time and they said it was all because of a movie and i just i'm gonna need more and then they still release the movie because of course like you can't give in to kim right we don't negotiate but like the movie was like you could only get it at home it wasn't in theaters it was crazy that was a crazy time we started this conversation aladdin to the interview tristan 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 was so it's positive, not a story. which was negative news for him. Oh, so I was saying that <laughs> when we ever take medication, we're like athletes. Oh, yeah, and the we world have to disclose. Needs to know. Yeah. So Claudia is so, on steroids. Period. I'm on steroids, and I usually yesterday I took them after the toast because I don't like the way they make me like my face really hot, and then I like speed up for like 20 minutes. Um, so if I get a little nuts, I'm not feeling it yet. If I get a little nuts, it's the, it's the zone, Predna zone. She's roided up. She's I'm juicing it up. Yeah, don't drug test me. I'll fail. That and the poppy seed bagel I had this week, I'm going to fail. She's a failure, which is positive news for her. She's No, it's actually negative news for me. Aladdin, still. Yeah. Uh, he was kind of onto something. It's confusing, positive, negative. No, it's the premise of the joke, Aladdin, is pure brilliance. Like, oh, like I, I got, literally this week I got a strep test. So like it came back negative. I'm like, shit. But it's positive. It really is confusing. Negative for strep. Which was positive, positive news. for me. Damn. Confusing. Confusing. So we've got a great show today. We've got new merch launching tomorrow, which is so exciting. If you have any questions, I'm wearing a size medium. I have, I think, I feel like this particular set should be the standard for sizing. I love the sample that we use. Like this is a size medium. I feel like it fits me perfectly. Yeah, this is it's a not size. Tight at all. I'm wearing a size large, and I could go for a medium. It's it's very baggy on me, so I do feel like you should be true to size. And if you're true to your size, it will be a little oversized. Exactly. This is my size. It's a, it's giving me room to breathe. I'm not tight anywhere, but it doesn't feel so big. Yeah. So I'm wearing medium. I think just do your regular size. Um, so that's exciting. Today's also our last in-studio show of the week. Tomorrow there is an episode. But after this episode, I'm heading to the south, heading down south to the land of the pines, you know? And I'm headed to the rodeo, which I'm so excited about. So hopefully I'll see the Fort Worth toasters out and about, you know, hustling. The stockyards. At the stockyards. And then I'm racing home Sunday to see the Niners play. And it's just so, it's, it's going to be a great weekend. Even though, like, tomorrow, it's not even Friday, but I'm looking forward to the weekend because... You're looking ahead. Today. You're an optimist. Yeah, yeah exactly. I have hope. Hatikva. I have hope, exactly. Great. Well, I think we should... Oh, 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 oh. Do I have plans this weekend? You know, the usual fun things, kids, trout, football, barbecue. Trout. Trout skin. Trout skin killer. We'll be reliving our weekend, maybe see some friends. It'll just be a nice home weekend after our big extravaganza. You need to decompress. You need this. yeah. Maybe a little sleeping in if the kids will let. Good luck. We'll see. You never know. It happens every once in a while. Maybe it could fall on a Sunday. Do you wake up in like a panic? No. Because I'll never forget, like the first time I went to visit Olivia when she had moved down um, to Florida, Shapiro was going on a business trip, so I came to stay with her. And like the third night I was there, we slept together in the same bed because I was like a little freaked out of being in the house alone. I think Olivia was too. She was new to being a homeowner. And I woke up at like 10 and Kayla must have been like one one and a half and Olivia was still in bed with me and we were freaking she was like oh she woke up in such a tizzy Kayla was still sleeping beautiful isn't that crazy Mm -hmm. crazy Kayla so now without further ado here are the fast size stories that you need to know and the fast five stories that you need to know are brought to you by current old school banking just is not working anymore they ding you with ridiculous fees they play games with your money and they want you to get into debt so stop banking old and get current 
the future of banking. Current is banking and credit building together. They make it easy to get paid as soon as possible, build credit safely, and save more all in one app. Managing your money can be hard, but Current makes it easy. You can set up direct deposits to get the most out of Current. You get paid up to two days faster. You can qualify for fee-free overdraft, up to $200 when you spend more than you've got. We've all done that before, but Current's got your back. Get their awesome looking build cards, that's like nothing else out there. You can build credit safely using your own money so you don't pile on debt. There are no credit checks, so anyone can start building credit right now with Current. I love that this is a forward-thinking company. Like, we need to start building credit. I, I feel like I started building credit too young. Mm -hmm. Like, for so long, I just had, like, a debit card, and it's really just not, like, a smart way if you want to, like, be financially healthy, but buy a home one day. So possibly the best part about Current is that there's no annual or minimum balance fees. So what are you waiting for? Get Current, the future of banking. Go to Current com slash toast or download the app that's c-u-r-r-e-n-t dot com slash toast terms apply current is a financial technology company not a bank banking services provided by choice financial group member fdic and crossover bank member fdic for full terms and conditions visit current.com or call 888-851-1172 for more information today's episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. Around the new year, we get obsessed with changing ourselves instead of just expanding on what we already are doing right. Maybe you finally organize one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you actually want to eat breakfast too. Well, therapy will help you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that will really stick and that are built to last. So if you've been thinking of giving therapy a, a try or you've been thinking about getting back into therapy if you used to do it, why don't you give BetterHelp a try? It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. What's so great about BetterHelp is it's just super accessible. So you can get matched with a therapist if it's not the right match the first time around, which is super, super common and not a big deal. They make it so easy to change it up. They'll just match you with someone else. It's not awkward in person if you like meet someone and then you have to like cancel and call and wait in the office. It's so awkward. BetterHelp gets rid of all that like social anxiety. They just match you with a new one until you find the right person. And once you do find the right person, you can communicate in whatever method you're most comfortable with. So that could be video chat, that could be audio phone calls, it could be texting, whatever medium you're most comfortable with. So celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash toast today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash toast, betterhelp.com slash toast. There's really never a bad time to get started with therapy and just start putting yourself first. And I feel like the beginning of the year is always a great excuse, but really like let's make this year our year. You know, we're putting ourselves first, girlies. Yes, we are. All right, hit me, Jax. Hit Our me with first a little bit shot. story is the party of the year. Jeff Bezos's 60th birthday party was star-studded at his Wait, house. I missed this whole thing. You, I missed it too, but I'm reading the details and I don't know how, like, everyone was there. Everything oh my God. was, was there. Was Harry and Meghan there? No. Mm. So it was at... On Saturday night at their house in Beverly Hills, the guest list was stacked with everyone from Hollywood A-listers to sports legends, business moguls, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner, Sierra, Russell Wilson, Oprah Winfrey, Kim Kardashian, Kris Jenner, Haley Bieber, Kendall Jenner. Then also, so that's like what Lauren brought to the party. Then Bob Iger, Bill Gates, Roger Goodell. Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom were there. Katy Perry performed. Usher performed. Oh. Black Eyed Peas performed. Wait, not Usher performing? Like when he's really supposed to be in like, you know, training. training he probably mode. he did probably was a rehearsal. For sure. Uh, Paris Hilton. Nikki Hilton were there. Jewel was there. I wonder if Kevin Costner was her date. Wait. I'm Shuketh. And Honestly, then Lauren also Sanchez the house has done was such like, a good job of like making her and Jeff like a Hollywood fixture and like hobnobbing with with the girlies, the Kardashians. Yeah, She's no, a really like good this job party, as a social chair of the Bezos family. This party is all her. Like the guest list is all her. And I feel like she's brought so much to his life, so much like joy, but also like glitz and glam, which he likes. Like he's a glitzy, he's a glitzy billionaire and he likes to enjoy the perks of his fortune. That's what like came through in Elon's book, like really the differences between the two because like they had a decent relationship, but now I don't think so anymore. Also, Elon wasn't there. Um, you but he's always there. like to him like you know Jeff like go back to your hot tub and he doesn't like how like Jeff uses his Blue Origin company to per to take himself to space like Elon is very much not about that 
Yeah, no, they definitely are two different types of billionaires. And like Elon like looks and acts poor. Yeah, no, he sold all of his homes. He stays at friends' houses. He has a small house like near one of the SpaceX launch pads, but he doesn't have like a, a proper home. So I actually saw this thread and it happened to be about Ballerina Farm, but the general thesis applies here. It's like rich people like to cosplay poor and poor people cosplay as rich. Like it's this weird human thing where everybody's acting like the opposite of what they truly are. But not, you can't generalize and say everyone. Jeff Bezos no. doesn't like to act poor. No, so Jeff Bezos is me Kim as a Kim Kardashian person. doesn't like to act poor. No, Jeff Bezos is exactly what I would do if I was a rich person. And actually they just had, Justin Sylvester was on the Good Guys podcast. Oh my God, this clip cracked me up. Me too. And I, they had a big conversation. Lauren Sanchez legend. They had a really big conversation about Lauren Sanchez. And honestly, Justin was like teaching Josh and Ben, like what it's like to be a lady. He's the lady sitter. And what, what, what are these, what it entails to be a lady like Lauren Sanchez. And it's a lot of work. It's a full-time job. Yeah. She's top of the heap lady. She's working overtime. And I think all of that is evident in this party. Like she's given, not given him, but is responsible for their, before this, he was just living in like the Pacific Northwest with his kids and nerd working and his mom and his friends. (laughs) (laughs) And now he's the toast of the town. No, totally. She, the, the life cycle of this relationship and how we got to this point when like when we first started talking about them the whole national inquirers like they could not have come further i couldn't be happier for them and like i don't particularly like jeff bezos the way lauren has endeared me to them as a couple and him as a person like i love i stand i ship i wish these two a lifetime of happiness no i truly love and i ship and i'm so glad that they're enjoying the fruits of their labor also at the party there were like a bunch of different rooms like it started off where you walked in it was like a replica of his first office which was his garage and then later that's obnoxious it was like a journey through so then like later there was like mcdonald's there he used to work at mcdonald's it was yeah it was a celebration of his life 60 years of jeff that's like low-key really impressive that he used to work at mcdonald's yeah he's an impressive guy he's very smart he was valedictorian of his class i feel like people think like amazon is an accident oh my god i'm so sorry i have to tell you about what's going on what does anybody know i think people are gonna know what i'm talking about about pookie talk okay there is this couple going viral jackie you would die for them die die for them die for them for them okay they're this like southern couple i don't know where they live her name is campbell and his name is jet but nobody really knows her name because in every video he calls her pookie so everybody's just like pookie 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 and they are so cute and so southern and he's definitely like older and a little bit nerdier and she's like this young hot thing but he loves her so much he's always buying her birkins and whatever and then of course everybody had to go do like a deep dive and of course normally it comes out like oh they you know are related because they're from the south like there was gonna be something dark you know All they found was that Jet, so impressive, like valedictorian of his undergraduate college, went to, and like, because everybody wonders how they're so wealthy, he's so smart, went to Wharton and got his, what do you get at Wharton? (laughs) Uh, Masters and law degree at the same time. He... It's like, you just have to see this couple. They're so Southern. They really remind me of a couple on Southern Charm. I could see them like being cast for real. And everyone's, they're like blowing up right now. And everyone's talking about them right now. And you would love them. She dresses so cute. And she just like literally makes these videos to like talk about her outfit. And her husband just talks the whole time about how he thinks she's so beautiful. That's so nice. Send me her IG. I will. No, IG. I wouldn't even know how to find that. Like. It should be pretty easy. And if she dresses cute outfits, then she has Instagram. If that's her thing. yeah. It's just hard because like I really, if you ask me her name, it takes me like 55 minutes to remember that her name is not Pookie. Okay. <laughs> oh, here. Oh, here she is. Okay. I feel like she's a toaster. Yeah, I think she is. Oh my God. You would love, okay, I'm setting to you. I'm set, you're going to, you should follow her. Also, you guys, did you notice if you're watching on YouTube, I set up my new phone. <gasps> oh, wait, we have to talk about that. We have to talk about my new phone because I just decided yesterday. And I do want to thank Claudia, even though her advice was wrong. And it turns out wrong. that you were the grandmother. I know. You're living I in the we're... Stone Age. I'm living in the future with my eSIMs. You guys, I just found out yesterday we're not using SIM cards anymore, question mark. And like some of us never used SIM cards to begin with. We were always eSIMming. Okay, well, that was like grandma of you back in the day. 
But I was the grandma to, yesterday. I own it. I own it. No, even I back in the day, it was ahead of my time that I've never had to undo a SIM card and I just transferred everything digitally. So, so how did you transfer? So yesterday I took out my SIM card of my one phone only to find out that my new phone actually doesn't even have a slot for a SIM card. So I called Verizon and I said, um, transfer my new phone. And they like hooked it up in a minute or two. They hung oh. up on me, which was beautiful. Meant my phone wasn't working anymore. And turned on my new phone and it was working. Shout I'm out so to Verizon. Even though my eSIM should have worked, like that was wrong of you. Yeah. You did make it not that but bad. But they rectified. They rectified. So I've spent the day like logging into all of my apps and just like enjoying my, my new phone. It's always exciting to get a new phone. It's always exciting to get a new phone. You're kind of inspiring me, even though there's nothing wrong with my phone. But I do feel like the kind of excitement was tampered because it's been over the course of three weeks trying to set up this new phone. Like I don't, of course. I feel like whenever I get a new phone, I'm like clickety, clickety, clack. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, a business, I'm on the phone with my seven attorneys doing seven deals, I by the way. I couldn't take a call on my old phone, but on my new phone, yeah. That okay. Instagram comment from Kourtney Kardashian was probably one of the loseriest things anybody's ever written on the internet. And that is saying a lot. Yeah. When someone like accused her in the comment section of like not being a hustler like her sisters. Back when Courtney was like in her flop era and she like didn't give a fuck about anything. Like she released her app like six months after her sisters did. Somebody like left a comment like unemployed girly. And she was like, sorry, can't respond to this comment on the attorney with my on the phone with my attorneys negotiating seven business deals. And we're like, sure. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Thou doth protest too much. <laughs> literally yeah which is why you don't respond even though even if she probably was i'm sure right. she had seven at least brand yeah. deals in the works with her attorney like you just don't respond and give air to these things it's so true it's so true especially when like you know the truth you know who you are yeah but by the way i was actually thinking about this yesterday whatever the opposite of flop era is courtney is like experiencing that obviously personally with her like just over joyous life you know kids pregnancy whatever but l let me tell you, I was scrolling TikTok yesterday, Jackie, every video, like all these lifestyle influencers, and they weren't ads. Let me this, let me that, let me, let me, let me. I saw like, I probably saw like 15 videos yesterday. Let me, and they just launched in Target. I feel like Lemmy's on its way to becoming like enormous. I really feel Good, I hope so. Me too. I, like, I feel like now she's really on the same level as the sisters in terms of businesses. Yeah, and also personal life, it just goes to show that life is very fluid. Yeah. You think things are one way, and swerve she's in love love of her life married who would have thought you know what actually it reminds me of this clip i just saw i forget who it was but this guest who was on the skinny confidential podcast and he was like doing parenting stuff he was basically like the first 10 years of your kid's life is really like the only time in their life where you are everything to them like after they turn 10 like they have friends and you're they have other people in their life who are like the most important to them in that moment then of course they get married and have their own kids and boyfriends girlfriends best friends and those first 10 years of your kid's life are also like the 10 years that you're like still hustling and like still trying to do your own thing. And it's like so sad that like you, like that's how life works where you can't really devote 100% of your time of those first 10 years to your kids because you have things going on too. You need to make a living, you need to do this. And it's kind of like Courtney did the, well actually she had kids before when she was young too. Maybe not, but I, I felt like maybe that clip was relevant, maybe it's not. No, I think it is relevant. I think what you said that she was in her flop era with the apps, like those were oh, the, yes. those were the yes. first 10 years of her kid's life. So yeah, she didn't give a shit about the apps that went nowhere and instead she was focused on parenting. Like in hindsight, she's winning. Thank you, yes. My point was correct. Yes, she did like exactly what that clip said. Yeah, as you should. And the thing is you get those 10 solid years where you are everything and like be there as much as you can. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's it. I mean, most of us are working, but as right. much as you can like be there. No, and so for someone like Courtney, who obviously like working is a choice, not a requirement. Honestly, she kind of killed it. Yeah. She kind of killed it. Like her kids are grown now. She was such like a hardcore, maybe even like a little nuts mom, you know, like so involved. And now her kids are grown and she's like having success and she's it fell in love again. Like, I don't know. It's like kind of everything. Yeah, no, it's it. it's kind of, it's a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? What number is it? Two. Oh, yeah. 
Stassi explains why she will not be on the Vanderpump Rules spinoff show called The Valley. So we didn't even discuss this, but a new show is coming to Bravo called The Valley. And it is about like Valley suburban life starring Jackson, Brittany, and a few new faces and also Kristen Doty. So I think people always expected a show like this would come from the yes. cast members that had settled down in The Valley. And they expected that Stassi would be on it. But she is explaining why she's not on it. And she said, it's not Bravo's fault that's that she's not on it. Once this idea was brought up and they were like, okay, we're going to film a sizzle with all of the people that would be on it, every fiber of my being voted no. She said, um, when Jeff Lewis asked her, she was on Jeff Lewis's show, she said, asked why she felt so strongly about not appearing on Bravo again. She said there were a lot of different reasons. First of all, it wouldn't be a reflection of what my reality is because it's just not my group of friends. Mm -hmm. And... She said, I'm friendly with some of them. I'm acquainted with some of them and some of the new ones too I, that I think are lovely, but it's not my crew. Then Jeff Lewis said that she might become closer to them if she filmed with them. And she argued that she doesn't want to have to go and do things that she normally wouldn't do. She said, I don't want to disrupt the, disrupt the life that I have right now because I really like my life right now. Yeah, I never really thought, there have been rumors about this show and everybody like somehow knew it was going to be called like Valley Village. Rumors about Jax, Brittany and Kristen making a return in some way of a spinoff. I don't think anybody really, I wasn't thinking Stassi was going to be a part of it, mostly because she doesn't live in the Valley. Oh, not even mostly because she doesn't live in the Valley, but I feel like reality TV is such a hard thing to like extricate yourself from because it's just like this, this B cycle and it's a cycle and you need it and you depend on it. And then when you're thrust out from it, like it might take you a while, but like once you get on your feet, it, it, I can't imagine the I, process of going back into it, especially once you've like seen how toxic it could be like what, yeah, the dark side. And I just feel like now that she's out, she's not going back in. And she's out and she's on her feet and she's doing well and she has so many things going for her. She does not need reality TV at all. Like, don't do it. And it's almost better that she was thrust out because I think making the decision to leave a show that's successful but also toxic is probably really hard because you're making a lot of money. And so obviously at the time when she was fired, it was really not ideal and there was like a lot of, you know, scandals going on at the time. But I think probably now in hindsight, she really got into a group where her podcast is really successful. She's a really successful Patreon. She's like a really successful influencer. She's a very devoted mom. And I think when you're a mom, and I'm sure you know this better than me, it's like, like good is good. Why ruin a good thing? You know, like I, she makes a very good living, I'm sure. She gets to be home with her kids. Yeah. Why, why throw yourself back into that sort of toxicity? Yeah, she's her own boss. And also making the decision to go back to reality TV is like a different sort of decision when you have kids. Because when it's just you and you know the beast yep. and she's like, she's a pro. She, she can handle it. I do want to say though, I could see Stassi going back to reality TV. Like I don't think she's necessarily done yet, but she's coming at it now from like a position of privilege where she knows what she's bringing. She doesn't have to be like on an ensemble show. She doesn't have to eat and shit. And she doesn't have to just be on any show that wants right. her. Like I agree if the right situation came to her, she might do it. She's not like against reality TV, for, TV forever, but she doesn't need it. She's not like been waiting to get back on TV. She, and if she the doesn't right need the right opportunity presents itself. She would consider it. I'm sure she it's, considered this heavily and then voted no. I think also a lot of it has to do with money. And so when you have other ventures, like she wrote another book, it was another New York Times bestseller. She did a big podcast tour. When you're off reality and you have a hard time monetizing whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's a podcast, it's very hard to get people to listen to you. Like it's not as easy as everybody thinks. And there are a lot of people, former Vanderpump Rules or just former reality TV show people in general who don't, make the same amount of money afterwards sometimes very rarely you end up making more Hannah Burner. I feel like she's the best example um but the, she's the exception not the rule yeah so more often than not whenever anybody gets an opportunity to go back they're going to do it and that's why these shows like Traders or they're so popular because there's really not a huge career after reality tv for everyone some people not for everyone yeah right agreed also reality tv brings so many eyeballs and so many positive things but it also opens you up again yep for scandal yep and once you've been through it like you don't you want to electively choose oh let me try that again yeah no I, I i was not shocked she was not on this show i was not expecting to see her and i i agree it was probably the right decision for her yeah are you ready for our next story are you ready kids aye aye turdy i can't hear you our next story White Lotus star Tom Hollander says he accidentally received Tom Holland's seven figures Avengers bonus check. So Tom Hollander, who is not Tom Holland, 
said he accidentally received Tom Holland's bonus check for an Avengers film. He revealed on Late Night with Seth Meyers that he often gets mistaken for Tom Holland in non-visual context because the White Lotus star is 56 (laughs) and Tom Holland is 27, including in the accounts department of his agency, which also briefly represented Tom Holland. He said, I went to see my friend who was doing theater in England. I sat smugly in the audience just having done a BBC show for $30,000. He said he checked his email during the interval and that's when he saw a message from the agency saying that that they were sending his first box office bonus for the Avengers. The actor said he thought to himself, I don't think I'm in the Avengers, but then he proceeded to open the email. It was an astonishing amount of money. It was not his salary. It was his first box office bonus, not the whole box office bonus, the first one. And it was more money than I'd ever seen. It was a seven figure sum. So seven figures could be anywhere from one to nine million. Yeah. Nine million, nine hundred thousand ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, He said that Tom Holland was only 20 or something in his age. So his feeling of smugness in the show that he was at uh, during the first half uh, disappeared very quickly. He said, but that showbiz, it's up, it's down, it's hero, it's zero. Well, I just want to say that's really so crazy. First of all, I didn't, Tom Hollander, if you don't know him, because I didn't know him either. He plays the, like the gay in charge who's trying to kill uh what's her name spoiler alert jennifer coolidge jennifer coolidge these gays they're trying to kill me he's like the one in charge um and when i was reading this headline i was so confused because when i saw tom hollander i just assumed it was zendaya's boyfriend i did not know that was his name so i understand how this mix-up could be like possible but low-key this is unacceptable like what you get paid is so personal (laughs) like and not only that this guy then going on Seth Meyers like telling the story like I wonder if he had Tom Holland's approval I'm sure he didn't um this is like low-key just nuts and a huge invasion of Tom Holland's privacy yeah but Tom Holland is in the Avengers he's Spider-Man and yeah I assume he makes millions of dollars so yeah it's not in Congress seven figures I thought it would be more it was just the first bonus and it wasn't his salary right right you get paid to do a movie and then after that's actually really crazy Like you just open your email, couple mail today. That's insane. And he's so low key. Tom Holland, yeah. He like doesn't really do press or interviews and he- He's not not really a celebrity. Like I don't watch his movies, therefore I do not know him aside from Zendaya's boyfriend. I know, and I don't even think he has an Instagram. Actually, he might, but it's like promotional, you know? It's like for work, because he's a working actor. Yeah, do you think he gets paid like Kevin Hart to promote on his Instagram? Oh, he does, I'm so sorry. He has 66 million followers. (laughs) What does he post? Forty, like very artsy work stuff. Critics' Choice, oh. the Brothers Trust. It's all like high quality content. It's promotional and a little artistic. Oh, and of course, philanthropic. He's at a puppy facility here. Oh, that's sweet. It's a pretty good Instagram. I'm not gonna lie. It's not bad. It's got a mix of everything. I feel like it's run by like an agency. Like this is classic serious actor Instagram with also commercial success. Yeah, yeah. He's also like one of those actors who's not afraid to look ugly. Like in half those pictures, he looked ugly when I know he's like a handsome man, you know? He posted a picture of Zendaya. I always thought they were super private, like that they've never even acknowledged that they're dating. But he posted a picture of just her uh, congratulating her for her award at CFDA Fashion Awards. They have been together for years. Yeah. And I think only in the last two, maybe one year, they've been like more public about but they still are not even like very, they don't walk red carpets really together. I guess like it, this probably made a lot of oh, 11 million likes. I'm sure people were wow. freaking that he posted this when he posted it, but because like, again, I don't know Tom Holland, like I didn't pay attention. Yeah, this is just one of those things where Jackie and I being really removed from the uh, universe of Marvel and DC Comics, like this is just not our sort of celebrity. Tur- you wanna know why, Turdy? Because we're why? too girly. We are so feminine. We're so feminine, we don't know who these superheroes are. But we're such a unique breed of females. Let me tell you why. Because we don't know anything about Marvel or DC, but we also don't, didn't like cry over the Barbie movie. So what does that make us? Where does that leave us? You know what we are? Toasters. And I just want to say, I know this is going to be a really polarizing thing to say, and I have to stop talking about the Barbie movie because I keep complaining about like people being mad at what I'm saying and I keep bringing it up. But Hillary Clinton, 
released a statement about Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie not being nominated for Oscars. And I feel as though officially as a nation, we have lost the plot. And I think the Barbie rhetoric and polarization of Barbie has officially, as of, as of yesterday, as of the minute Hillary Clinton said that tweet with that statement and she made a graphic, we she took it too far. We girl bossed too close to the sun, for real. No one's gonna take us seriously as a gender now. Seriously, thanks, Hillary. No, the cringe was off the charts cringe. It was far too much. Yeah. And I posted like something about Barbie movie on my close friends and like not like every influencer being like, wait, no, me too. Like what is with people in the Barbie movie? Like I didn't think it was so great. It's like we're literally living under communist rule where we can't say that we don't like the Barbie movie. Kim Jong Barbie. Kim Jong, Barbie Jong Un. Barbie Jong Il. Un. You think un is unier than ill? Unagi. What's that from? Friends. Classic. You could just say pure nonsense and then just tell me it's from friends and he'd be like, oh yeah, classic. Yeah, Jackie Gleba. Friends. Yeah, it is. But that's actually from friends. <laughs> no. I didn't just make sure. it up. It's Ross's and Rachel's daughter's first word. Gleba. And they're like, that's not a word. And then he looks it up and it's like a particular type of like molecule and you know Ross is really into science no, like I like, literally the she's hate a scientist the hate I have in my heart <laughs> for what you're describing right now um but that is funny he's a scientist but up until that that was not funny it was so funny yeah. but though I do usually like friends through your summarizations you didn't let by the way yesterday I was wanting to cite a friend's reference and you totally cut me off and I never got back to it no leave it there leave it in the dust <laughs> Let's get into our okay. fourth story. No, let's not, bitch. Let's not, bitch. Is this nice? Now you're back to cursing. I think the kids are asleep. You can curse again. Shit, mother... No, not in front of the ad. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of today's episode is brought to you by Cygnos. The CDC estimates that there are approximately 96 million American adults that have prediabetes, and of those with prediabetes, more than 80% don't know that they have it. So a healthy weight allows insulin to work more efficiently and can help you keep regular blood sugars within a normal range. A healthy diet and regular exercise are the best ways to help bring your blood sugar levels back to a healthy range, and Cygnos can help you short circuit this cycle by using data directly from your body to design a weight loss plan that's unique to your lifestyle. Cygnos is the only company that combines a CGM, which is a continuous glucose monitor, with an AI-driven app to deliver real-time glucose monitoring for optimal health and weight management. With Cygnos, you can literally see which foods cause your blood sugar to spike above reasonable levels and get real-time alerts to do a bit of exercise to bring them back down. So you can learn the difference between stress eating and physical hunger. You can better manage your energy throughout the day, and you can sleep better at night. And you'll be able to meet your weight loss and health goals with unique to you data. Cygnos' unique to you program for weight loss is backed by a growing field of scientific research and scientists that point to stable glucose as a key part of overall health. Cygnos removes the guesswork of weight loss and provides you with the tools and knowledge that you need to develop healthier habits. It combines glucose data from the CGM or the Continuous Glucose Monitor with an AI-driven app to deliver real-time glucose insights for optimal health and weight management. Right now, Cygnos has an offer exclusive for our listeners. Go to Cygnos.com, S-I-G-N-O-S.com and get 20% off select plans by using code TOAST. That's Cygnos.com, code TOAST to get 20% off select plans today. Thank you, La. You're welcome. Our next uh, story. Uh, um, uh, yeah, ha, ha, ha. That's beautiful. Maybe you should perform at Coachella because they're seeing the slowest ticket sales in a decade. So Coachella lineup was announced last week. In past years, the tickets have sold out in a matter of minutes. It is now five days later and tickets are still wow. on sale. It turns out people aren't all that interested in Coachella this year. This year marks the slowest ticket sales in a decade. This is according to SFGate, which cites some troubling stats for Golden Voice & Co. Long story short, passes for this year's Coachella just aren't selling like they used to. They're very much still up for grabs five days after hitting the market, whereas in the past it would sell out in minutes. Interesting, this site lets people purchase up to eight tickets this year compared to only two in previous years. Oh, wow. So it looks oh, as oh, though festival dire. organizers are practically begging people to splash some cash on them. At least that's how it feels anyway, according to TMZ. Though they've never had this issue before, fans famously waited hours in virtual queues to get their hands on covetous wristbands in years gone by. This is strange because Coachella tickets are usually a hot commodity selling out in minutes. So, so I think it's layered. What's I think the layered. reason for the season? As a reminder, think, the headliners are Lana Del Rey, Tyler, the creator, Doja Cat, and No Doubt, which I think is a good lineup. I, I don't think it's a good lineup. 
it's a good lineup. However, Coachella got themselves into this pattern where the last like five years, there has been like a major, major star. Like we've had Lady Gaga, we've had Beyonce, we've had Justin Bieber, we've had Billie Eilish, we've had The Weeknd, we've had Harry Styles. Like they have made it into a Super Bowl of sorts and they don't have that type of performer this year. You don't think Lana Del Rey is that performer? No. With a cult following who would follow around the world for her? It's a cult following. It's very niche. It's not on the radio. You know, it's not commercial. Also, but I do want to say, I still think the lineup's pretty good. I, I think another huge factor as to why people aren't buying tickets that I don't think anybody's talking about is like, we're in an economic crisis. Like, it's a, these tickets are really expensive. And the whole journey is expensive. It's not only the tickets. It's the renting of the house. It's the outfits. Coachella is this, like, affair. It's not just a music festival where yeah. you wear a pair of denim shorts and no makeup and you just, like, sweat and cry. It's not Woodstock. It's an event. It requires, if you're going to go and do it up, it requires a lot of money outside of the actual ticket, airfare, hotel, lodging, things like that. And it's thousands of dollars. And not everyone can do that right now. So I think it's a combination. I would love to know, what was Coachella going on in like 2008? What were ticket sales like then, you know? Yeah, it's... I think it was going on. In, it was going on in 2008 because it's been around for a while, but it didn't become like this the pop phenomenon. culture sort of thing. It was really an indie music festival for a long time, mm-hmm. um, and not what it is right now. So Turdy's blaming the economy, and I do think that is a good. I think it's a factor. It's I not think everything. It's definitely a factor, but I also think that maybe Coachella. You know, no. all good things must come to an end, and maybe this yo- new younger generation like isn't as into festivals as the millennials are maybe they just want to see like their one performer I don't know I'm just guessing but seriously like all good things must come to an end and maybe this is like the slowing down of Coachella because the people who can go are not into it wow I didn't even think that like that's a good take I it didn't cross my mind that like Coachella is over party. It's like, it's not cool anymore. Like it's on its way out. Yeah. And I do think it's very much like a millennial it thing. Is. And like the millennials are having kids and, and doing different things or, or maybe just like don't want to go see Doja Cat because she's for Gen Z. But the Gen Zers don't want to go to Coachella because it's like a millennial relic. Honestly, you're making fire fucking points. Thank you, love. Like that thing you just said. That like the lineup is now geared towards Gen Z. Gen Z doesn't want to be associated with Coachella because, and also, you have to be twenty one to go to Coachella. Actually, you might have to be eighteen, but still, yeah, I know what you're saying. That's a fire point. Fire. Yeah, so I feel like there's Cookie just a little fire today. A little bit of a gap. Yeah. And I don't and like lol at everybody who thought it was going to be Taylor. Not I mean, only if is it, it was not Taylor, Taylor, we wouldn't be opposite. having this conversation. Of course, but that's the thing. I'd like to see if you're. If your ticket sales are predicated on how big of a star you can get, that's like a hamster wheel. Yeah. You're never going to be able to keep up with no, that. No, and it definitely gets away from the original mission of Coachella where people were going, re- regardless of the headliners, they were trusting that the music would be good because it was like curated by indie music experts. And now it's, right. it's totally dependent on the headliner. It's Jingle Ball now. It's Jingle and Ball. When we went, like, for the first time a while ago, it was still very much, like, indie vibes, but Lady Gaga was the headliner, and it was, like, kind of crazy, because everything else was, like, Tame and Paula, the, you know, Menendez brother. No. Martinez. Not the Menendez brothers. I hope. The Martinez brothers. It was very people you've never heard of, and Lady Gaga was, like, kind of crazy, and that's why we went. We were like, all right, we'll go to see a Lady Gaga concert, and... They just really leaned into that, which is fine. It's very much uh, giving Jingle Ball these days. Yeah, but then it's also going to give Willy Nilly. Yeah, it's giving like, what is Coachella's aesthetic now? Coachella's having an identity crisis. Yes. But you know who's not? Stagecoach. Tickets higher sales than ever. Right. I was wondering how this would compare to Stagecoach because country fans aren't Willy Nilly, but literally like pop music and what's on the radio no no one person through their entire life is really going to be listening to the same radio station their entire life with the hits. They're going to yeah. eventually, like, I'm going to listen to The Pulse now. I'm not going to lie. Oh, wow. She's pulsing. Z100, or shall I say Y100? It's not always for me now because it's TikTok I, music. I now want to go listen to what's considered the classics. Yeah, I feel that. So The Pulse it is. Yeah. I, Light I, FM? I haven't, I haven't heard any KTU. I haven't heard anything about um, stagecoach tickets, but I have to imagine they're not experiencing this problem. 
Oh, I thought you sounded like an expert when you said highest ticket sales in history. Oh, no, no, no. But I didn't hear anything. And I like the last time I was there, it was packed to the brim. Well, it's always going to be packed. And the headliners weren't even amazing. And this year, they're amazing. It's Morgan Wallen this year. Oh, gonna, yeah. I, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure they're they sold gone. Out you can't even get yeah. Morgan Wallen tickets like in your town. So, yeah, we're going to Coachella for him. And I'm pretty sure they released the tickets. And I'm pretty sure you can't get them. Stagecoachfestival.com. Join waitlist. Stagecoach 2024 is sold out. Okay, but how long did it Eric take? Eric Church, Miranda Lambert, Morgan Wallen. Those are the headliners. And then second line, Post Malone, Jelly Roll, I'm Nickelback, sure, no, no, no. Diplo. I'm sure you're 100% right, but Coachella tickets will sell out. It's just been five days and they haven't. How long did Stagecoach tickets take to sell out? This website says it's the biggest on sale in history. Stagecoach 2024 oh, is officially sold out. You have made history. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Join the wait list to be notified if any passes become available. So you were right. The biggest in history. Yep. And where's the article on that? Let me look at news. No. But good for them. Okay. Are you ready for our next story? It's our fifth and final. Yeah. And I need to shout out to Lauren Elizabeth because she sent it my way and she said this is giving fifth and vinyl energy. Oh, what'd she say? PETA is calling to replace beloved I Groundhog's saw. day star, Puxatawney Phil, with a gold coin. So PETA wants oh, to I'm cancel. So sorry. PETA's making news twice. They're going viral for being really insensitive. Not PETA. The, Univers the University of Georgia, you know, go dogs. Dogs? Had, they had like a real life mascot dog, this English bulldog, um, and he passed away. And English bulldogs, like, they don't encourage breeding English bulldogs because they have a lot of health issues. They like, literally can't breathe. Um, and so they, like, posted a graphic that he died and being like, maybe this will teach you to stop breeding. Like, and it was, like, really insensitive. Yeah, like, like read the room. We're grieving. No, and you're supposed to be, like, an organization that advocates on behalf of animals. So, like, you using the death of an animal to be, like, snarky. People were really upset in no. defense of the dog. Yeah, no. So they're doing that, but they're also trying to cancel Puxatawney Phil. PETA okay. wants to replace Phil, the beloved groundhog that is used to forecast weather during the annual Groundhog Day celebration in Pennsylvania. They want to replace him with a gold coin, the group said this week. PETA wrote an open letter on Monday to the Puxatawney Groundhog Club in Pennsylvania in which they encouraged its president to remove the animal from the celebration. Should he formally retire Phil and take him to a sanctuary, then PETA would present the group with a giant coin, they said in the letter. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, a groundhog's weather prediction is no more accurate than flipping a coin. Up for debate. He is not a meteorologist and deserves better than to be exploited every year for tourism money. Okay, I just want to say, like, PETA is dying on the wrong hill. There are so many more worthy animal causes. And I think when it comes to, like, old school traditions that involve animals, like, we have to take it case by case. Like, I think a really old school tradition, like, here in New York is the horse and carriage rides in the city. And like, I personally feel like those should not be allowed anymore. Like, I think we've evolved past that as a society. Puxatani Phil having to work one day, he'll be fine. I'm sure he's treated like a king. I am sure the horses in Central Park are looking at Puxatani Phil as like this privileged snob. And like, he's getting attention, the attention of PETA. PETA should be using their platform for bigger and better things. I'm sorry, this is a waste. Or what about like the dogs that were shot dead by Hamas on October 7th as they invaded Israel? Like, where's PETA on that? L love the point you're bringing up there too. Love like, that. Like, PETA can fuck right off. Yeah, is how no, I seriously. Feel. This is such an abuse of their platform. Puxatawney Phil doesn't hurt anybody. He probably lives this lavish life. Nobody talks to him except for one day. He has to work one day and all he has to do is like be put in a box. He's fine. Leave him alone. This is a harmless tradition. And I'm a big advocate on behalf of animals. Like whenever I see something, even when I see a dog, you know me, when I see a dog in a movie, it bothers me. I think Phil is fine. Phil He's fine. is fine. And like, why Phil are you trying to fine. unemploy Phil? Phil is fine. He has a job. He makes a living. He has a nice life. And you want to fire him? You want to take his job away? Hog with no job? And no, and Wrong. Phil has a family to support. Wrong. Wrong. The only, if they wanted to make a good argument, I would say the argument would be like, how about we stop dropping the groundhogs? Yeah, and that's a human error thing, you know? Like, Bill de Blasio dropped a groundhog, correct? Yes, he did. Where was PETA? Then. Because that ain't right. It's what we like to call animal abuse. I would not want to hold a groundhog personally. Like, 
it's they're kind of like of the rat elk rat elk yes and i think perhaps why our reaction to this story like is so we don't give a fuck is because it's literally a rat <laughs> and like you're a not gonna find rat. me like horses are these beautiful smart unbelievable creatures you know i don't feel that way about a groundhog a groundhog is to me like a beaver yeah. Like you get a, what is that movie? Caddy Shack, Shack. They got groundhogs in the garden and it's like a problem, you know? Yeah. They're pests, no? It's like a possum. Yeah, it's a pest. Literally. So, sorry, you're not going to find me. Like I love animals, but like I'm going to put a mouse trap down, you know? I'm human. Right. You got to draw the line somewhere. I'm sorry. No, I think I stand with Phil and the Puxatani. Oh, only Phil. The Puxatani Groundhogs Association. I think what you're doing is totally fine. And it's a nice, one of those like nice archaic traditions that traditions. like means nothing, but it's cute. Yeah, no, like we know the weather is not listening to Phil, you know? Mother Nature and Phil do not communicate. And it's like a fun tradition for kids. It's so dumb and harmless. I can't even believe we're having this conversation. I agree. So officially we stand with Phil. Yeah, if you want to know where the toast stands, it's firmly with Phil. It's usually against PETA, whatever they're yapping on about. No, I feel like usually I'm with PETA. Like really? I stand with PETA. Like uh, their cause, their mission, their raison d'etre is good, but I feel like in practice, they're always directing their efforts at the worst things and in the worst ways too. So I feel, okay, I think that their choice of campaigns is not always the best, like the things they go after. But I do think they get a bad rap because I think there are like people who love PETA and maybe don't work for PETA in official capacity who do like insane stunts in on the behalf name of, of PETA. PETA. But I actually, I don't think those people work for PETA. I have to, like I have the to people who throw paint. Yes. At fashion shows. Right. Those don't come from PETA on high. I don't think they're hired, you know, staffers from PETA. I think they're just like real PETA Felix. Well, Pe no. PETA files? P yeah, right. <laughs> But not in the pedophilic sense. In the, in the, in the pita felix sense. Yeah, like how you're a Francophile, you're a pita file, but not having to do with children. I just feel like pita has gotten really far away from their mission at times. And I like, agree and, with and that. And that they use their platform and like their brand name as a more of like a political football than to actually care for animals, all animals, all the time. But I agree with you from like a public POV. I think they have like in recent years started to come off a little nuts, but I do imagine as an organization, they still do really good work. Like behind the scenes, things we don't know about. Right, but why is the good work behind the scenes and the nutty work out front? That is a question for the PR director of PETA, and it's a good one. Yeah. It's a good question. Thank you. I feel like they all just like sat around in a room like what's gonna be our next thing? And it's like, no, no, Pucks the to past, Tawny Phil? The past five years, like we have seen the radicalization of PETA. I completely agree. That's what I'm saying. We need a fresh PETA like that really, I mean, that's like Vanderpump Dogs. I think that they are really cause driven. Yes. yes. Vanderpump Dogs is a new PETA. Like how we all learned about that dog festival in China. Like we learned about that from Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. Vanderpump Rules, Vanderpump Dogs is a new PETA. I love that. Love it. Even the Vanderpump Dogs like only does dogs. Whereas but like I was just about animals. to say that, but like they don't. I feel like they do other animals. It's just called Vanderpump Dogs, and so they they're ready for actually. A I'm sorry. I think they have rebranded to Vanderpump Pets. But does that just mean like domestic, domestic. animals? Domestic. I don't know. Maybe they're clearly working through what we're working through because they're evolving, and I think it's great. Yeah. So those were the Fast Five stories, and that is unfortunately our show, which is so sad. But what's not sad is merch is dropping tomorrow. So these sweat sets that Jackie and I are wearing, just a reminder, 10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow, Friday, January 26th, at shoptoastmerch.com. We will put links everywhere. If you want this sweat set, don't worry. We're going to make sure you get it. Check our Instagram stories, the toes, Jacks, and Claude, so that you can see everything that's dropping tomorrow. We will. We had a photo shoot. We had a photo shoot, and we'll have blanks that you could see just like the products so you can plan your buy thank you guys so much for listening to the toast the millennial morning show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every monday through friday on youtube so if you're watching this on youtube please feel free to subscribe give this video a thumbs up we're also available as podcasts anywhere podcasts can be found so that's spotify itunes stitcher public radio iheart radio cast box all the places wherever you listen to podcasts find us the toast leave a five-star review about how beautiful stunning and wickedly talented we are hope you guys have an amazing day and we'll see you tomorrow Bye. Love ya. Bye.